Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 20th of April 2011. My name is Total Biscuit. I'm bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comments. In the headlines today, a excerpt from the latest WoW magazine has been released for free on the EU Battle.net site, and I assume the US as well. You can go and have a read of that, and it is a interview with the Cinematics team. So you can get plenty of information about how the cinematics are put together. So this is one of several great articles in the latest magazine, which is currently on issue four. You can check out information on that in the link in the description below this video. There's been a new article put up on the Battle.net website entitled The Library, which focuses on the book Storm Rage by Richard A. Knack and gives you a basic plot overview of what to expect. It's fairly interesting if you're looking to get a few tidbits about the lore, and it also links to the Blizzard store where you can actually purchase this particular title. And I haven't actually seen this article before, so I assume this is a new series. However, this will no doubt be going around highlighting the various official pieces of written fiction in the form of novels, and I would also imagine comic books going forward. The latest round of EU community news has been released, including foreign language news from Italian site Battlecraft.it that's published its latest weekly add-on column, as well as a recap of Patch 4.1, and an interview with the Ten-Man Guild, The Italian Job. Also, Polish site wow.battlenet.pl has translated the intro to the latest new law story, Council of the Three Hammers, into Polish. All that, including the roundup of this week's comics and noteworthy forum threads, available in the description below this video. And now it's time for nothing, because yet again there are no interesting blue posts. What the hell is going on, Blizzard? Where are all the cool blue posts? And you can go and look if you like. Go and have a look at Wowhead's blue tracker, and you will see that there is nothing of note. There really, really isn't. It's all been announcements which are also part of the news, and that's really been about it. You know, you've really got to start posting interesting things again, Blizzard, otherwise I'm going to have a very sparse show. And with that, it's time for your daily grind. This is an alliance quest to be found in Ashenvale, which follows up the quest Recover the Fallen, and it is called Defend the Tree, and that's exactly what you have to do. However, it's a little bit different because you become this giant ghost panther thing that you can use to slaughter, and I do mean slaughter, the Warsong enemies at Rainwood Retreat, and you have to kill 50 of them. And I think you might enjoy doing just that since this particular creature, the Shade, has a nasty, nasty rake that hits multiple opponents. It is absolutely brutal. The cool thing I like about this quest is they've sort of varied it up a little bit, and you have to use moon wells in order to regain health, because later on in the waves you go up against large war machines that do an awful lot more damage to you. That is really, really awesome. I'm a big fan of this particular quest. It is a lot of fun, and sadly we don't have it on the Horde side. But hey, I suppose a couple of cool quests have to be given to the Alliance just to keep them playing. Sounds reasonable to me. Oh yeah, and you get to slice Kodos into tiny little bits as well, so it is pretty hardcore. Great quest there, and I'd highly recommend that you go and check it out. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature. This is the Court of Law. We continue our series on the capital cities of Azeroth by going on to the one and only Ironforge. Ironforge is a masterpiece of dwarven skill in shaping rock and stone. It was constructed in the very heart of the mountain, an expansive underground city which is home to explorers, miners, and warriors. Massive doors of rock protect the city in the times of war, and lava from the mountain itself is redirected and redistributed for heat, energy, and smithing purposes. Ironforge is the ancient home of the dwarves. It was once ruled by the High King Modimus Anvilmar, who left no heir upon his death, and as a result, eventually led to the War of the Three Hammers. Before the war, when the Dark Iron Clan was banished from the city, Ironforge was the commercial and social center of all the dwarven clans. The War of the Three Hammers was a civil war between the Bronzebeard, Wildhammer, and Dark Iron clans. The conflict began with the death of Modibus Anvilmar and the exile of the Wildhammer and Dark Iron dwarves from Ironforge. It continued when Emperor Thorazan, leader of the Dark Iron clan, launched simultaneous assaults on the Bronzebeard city of Ironforge and the Wildhammer city of Grimbatol. Both attacks were defeated, with King Mordoran Bronzebeard defending Ironforge against Thorazan and Thorazan's wife Modgood, slain by King Cardrus Wildhammer. The combined Bronzebeard and Wildhammer armies marched south to the city of Thorazan in the Red Ridge Mountains, the Dark Iron capital. Sensing impending defeat, Thorazan accidentally summoned Ragnaros the Fire Lord into Azeroth. The cataclysm formed Blackrock Spire and halted the advance of the Bronzebeard and Wildhammer armies. This reckless action by the Dark Iron clan has had numerous terrible consequences all the way through to this very day. Unlike the cities of humanity, Dwarven lands remained relatively untouched during the events of the First War, however, many 
dwarven strongholds fell during the second war between the Horde and the Alliance of Lordaeron. However, the mighty city of Ironforge, nestled in the wintry peaks of Don Moreau, was protected by its great gates and was never breached by the invading Horde. For the following years after the war, King Magni Bronzebeard could be found at the High Seat as the dwarven leader of Ironforge. However, seeking to protect his people from the cataclysm sweeping the planet in the wake of Deathwing's return, he unleashed the powers of a tablet discovered in Old War. Ironforge was saved, but Magni was turned into a crystal statue. In the wake of King Magni's petrification, Magni's daughter Moira, who had run away from her father and married Dagran Thorazan, ruler of the Dark Iron Clan, returned to Ironforge with her infant son to claim the throne. Backed by the Dark Iron Clan, Moira ruled Ironforge arrogantly and with an iron fist. She held all the people of Ironforge hostage, including Prince Anduin Rin, who was there as a Stormwind diplomat that would aid the dwarves in such troubling times. In a dinner with Anduin Rin, Moira revealed that she was not ensorcelled by her husband, but rather fell in love with him because he respected her, unlike a father who always wanted a son and didn't think a female was fit to rule. When King Varian Rin heard that Moira and her Dark Iron clan had taken over Ironforge and held his son hostage, he was enraged. Varian and 18 SI7 operatives embarked on a mission to liberate Ironforge and assassinate Moira. When Varian was about to execute Moira, Anduin, who had rushed back to Ironforge, convinced Varian that it would be better to guide Moira to be a better leader instead. Despite Moira being a tyrant who held the city hostage, she was still the legitimate heir to the throne, and killing her would have only put the succession of Ironforge into question, thus leading to more chaos and conflict. Whereas if she had lived, through her and her son, all dwarven clans could unite. Varian slowly agreed, but was also conflicted as Moira had caused so much chaos and had already threatened the safety of his son. Varian agreed to spare Moira's life, but stipulated that if Moira was to be leader and unite the dwarves, then she'd have to earn her crown by earning her people's respect. In order to take into account the opinions of all dwarves, Varian called for the formation of the Council of the Three Hammers, which includes Moira's uncle Muradin Bronzebeard and Thane Falstad Wildhammer. And with that, it's time for the mailbox. This one comes in from LaKesley, who says, My girlfriend and I both play WoW quite a bit and have been since early last year. The problem is she always has problems getting into raids or staying in raids. You see, my girlfriend is deaf and has been since birth. Considering the only raids on my server that don't require the use of Ventrilo are the really old 60 speedrun raids using level 80 pluses, she hasn't been able to do much in the way of endgame content. The moment she mentions she can't use Vent, she has either outright refused access to a raid or kicked from a raid in progress. This problem also happens with heroics on occasion as well. My girlfriend knows all the tactics required of raid fights, she knows her class hunter like the back of her hand, she reads Wowpedia and Wowhead almost religiously, and she does a good job of coordinating with the party in the chat window. Despite this, the issue of not being able to use Vent always comes up. Even though she's been level 85 since a week after Cataclysm launch, she has yet to obtain the Kingslayer title because of this problem. My question is, what are your thoughts on such situations like this? Do you believe it's logical for a raid to kick out the weakest link to coin one raider I met, simply because of a lack of voice communication, or is this a form of prejudice that should not be tolerated in the game? Well, it's not a form of prejudice. It is simply the choice of the raids to use voice communication. When you join a raid, you accept the rules of that raid. And generally speaking, if it's a decent raid and not a pile of scrubs, they will specify certain things like you need this, you need that. So you might need a particular level of gear. And of course, you may need voice communication. If you join a raid where you need voice communication and you don't have it, then yes, they have rights to remove you. I'm sorry, that's just the way that it is. It is a majority rule and it is there so that everyone can have as much fun as possible. And you can't put yourself in a situation where a group is going to turn around and say, seriously, we want voice communication, we all want to be on voice comms, we all need you to be on voice comms, and then suddenly ignore the requirement to be on voice comms. I know it's not fair by the sounds of it, but think of how fair it is to everybody else. It doesn't matter that your girlfriend might be excellent at the game and knows all the strategies and things like that. If she's not on voice comms and something happens that she has to rapidly respond to or an order has to be sent through voice comms rapidly, she's not going to be able to receive that and therefore she's going to be a problem. The way to avoid this would simply be to join a guild that would understand this particular condition. And usually you'll see that most good guilds will have an application process and will also take into account previous experience and things like that. And I know it sucks, but I'm sorry, it's majority rule. You just, you cannot 
join raids that require something and then not have it. You can't be the odd one out in that regard. It's not fair on everybody else. You've got to abide by the rules of that raid, and if you don't like it, well, you can go form your own raid. Have you ever considered doing that? Start a pug raid, something like that. And of course, if you're not already in a guild, then find one that will accept somebody with that kind of condition who will be willing to bring her onto raids. That's all I can really suggest, honestly. This one comes in from Jay Stitchin, who says, I started the game in the month before TBC and enjoyed the game for almost four years, but recently quit in January. After a few months of not participating in WoW, but still listening to you and a few other things, I decided to renew my subscription today. After only 15 minutes of playing the game again, I logged out and cancelled my sub again. There are a few reasons why. One of them is that I played about a month of Rift before quitting and recently finished Crisis 2. So when I returned to the game, I was reminded that the graphics are still in reality six years old and that the resolutions don't work all that well with my computer. I almost can stand being back in Azeroth only due to the fact that the graphics looked so terrible to me. Now you must understand that this doesn't come without context and I do remember when Crisis came out and I made the comment to my friends that I would buy an entirely new computer just to play WoW on it if WoW had graphics on par or above Crisis. The second was after playing with my graphics settings, I stopped to wonder why I was flying around on my nether drake above eastern plague lands and saw that what I was working on before I quit WoW was getting the 100 artifact achievement. Not wanting to grind archaeology right away, I hearthed back to Stormwind and wandered around for about seven minutes trying to find something to do, but I couldn't. I didn't have any mats to craft anything, my guild took me off the raiding roster, and I couldn't get back on until about two weeks from now, and the random queue for any DPS on my realm is about 55 minutes. I almost went and did what I was planning on, which was leveling an alt, and I'd been meaning to do that, but I just kept screaming to myself. In my time away from where I've played indie games that look better than this to me, bloody hell, my texture back in Minecraft is more endearing to me than this. And that's when I quit. I guess my question is, knowing that you have quit too, when do you think that they will improve the game enough to give you continuing entertainment to justify playing WoW outside of the same one to two raids a week for over half a year, and when do you think they'll make it a priority to overhaul the game's engine? Well, I don't think they're going to overhaul the game's engine until they see a significant drop-off in subscribers. At the end of the day, they are still attracting an awful lot of people that do not have great computers into the game. And think about it for a second. Think about the massive upsurge in social games whose graphics are the equivalent of something that I could render on my mobile phone. That's not great, and yet still, they are extremely popular. Graphics do not matter to everybody. And it's vitally important that you realize that. It's incredibly important. However, I do kind of agree that it's gotten to the point where upgrades are required. I have to say that I don't think your assessment is entirely fair. Cataclysm has introduced a number of higher quality textures into the game, and that's blindingly obvious if you look at, say, the Goblin and the Worgen models, as well as a lot of the remodeled areas in the cities. However, that's mixed in with stuff that is very low resolution, and the texture quality isn't so great, so it actually ends up standing out even worse than it did previously. Yeah, just look at things like apples and cheese. I mean, apples are octagonal, for God's sake. It's just absolutely absurd. That said, WoW does have a fairly unique graphic style going for it that's quite artistic and cartoony, and the proportions are a little bit weird. So some people like that, and some people hate it. I mean, back in the day when WoW first came out, some people said this is the worst-looking game I've ever seen. And obviously, that's some stupid subjective opinion. But some people just don't get along with the graphic style. And then some people will get along with it till the end of time, as far as I'm concerned. As to what we'll get me playing the game again regularly well obviously the lack of raid content is problematic although nowhere near as bad as it was in wrath by any stretch god i remember quitting after a month and a bit i think actually maybe even before that with the launch of wrath of the lich king simply because we did nax and we got bored of everything and we couldn't care less about three drakes so it was just like well screw that we're coming back when old war comes out but it is a little bit sad that they have once again had this massive period of time whereby they really should have brought out another raid and they haven't. And God knows when Firelands is actually coming. Okay, folks, so that's me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching Azeroth well Daily. Please remember to thumb it up and favorite it if you like it. Once again, bear in mind, I am down to the Insomnia 42 LAN in Newbury from Thursday through to Sunday. I will try to keep content coming. I'm in an environment where I should be able to record some stuff. We'll see how that one turns out. I will try and get Azeroth Daily out regularly. Thanks for your support, guys, and I'll see you next time.